Decentralization, the Internet of Things, and Human Flourishing. This is the fourth video in a short series of videos on the topics of centralization, decentralization, blockchain, and smart contract technology, and how they can affect human flourishing. Before I get to new material, though, today, I want to summarize some key points from those first three videos, which I have links to down below. At Good to Know, I read the books and articles that you don't have time for. In the first video, Decentralization and the Power Grid, we used the existing regionally organized power grid as an example of, and to help us define, a centralized model of providing service. One of multiple problems with a centralized model is that people become dependent on that central entity, in this case it's the power plant, for that specific service, which in this case, providing electricity. So, when the central intermediary is removed, the service evaporates. Of course it does. However, there is more than one way to skin the proverbial cat. When the centralized intermediary is bypassed, in this case through a decentralized microgrid of personal solar panels and windmills, the power plant can be removed and the participants now rely upon each other for the service. The central intermediary is no longer necessary for the supply of electricity and human needs, human flourishing, continues to be met. Keep in mind, all the technologies we're discussing in these videos can be and are beginning to be applied in developing countries. This begins to illustrate the power of a decentralized model of services. Decentralization not only has the advantage of not having to rely on the central power plant intermediary for uninterrupted service, it can also free the microgrid participants from having to pay the price set by the utility company. The microgrid participants can negotiate a fair price for electricity between each other, which is automatically activated through smart contracts, which reside and are activated on the blockchain. We will review smart contracts shortly. In the second video, Centralization and the Unbanked, we discussed Michael J. Casey and Paul Vigna's book, The Truth Machine, and learned that 1.7 billion people do not have a bank. Therefore, they have no financial history and thus very limited prospects for credit. 2.4 billion people worldwide have no official ID. With no bank, no financial history, and no ID, accessing the banking services the rest of us take for granted becomes virtually impossible for them. The third video discussed some helpful innovations for the world's poor and unbanked people. We covered that just as developing countries have leapfrogged regional electrical grids and simply developed solar and wind technologies straight away, they have also skipped building telephone landline infrastructure and have developed cell phone technology straight away. In fact, 98.7% of the population in developing countries have access to mobile phones. That translates into more people having access to mobile devices than to clean water or electricity. Access to mobile phones is important in assisting poor people in developing countries to build better lives for themselves. Through the use of dApps or decentralized applications, organization, organizations and their software apps, such as WeTrust and Trusted Lending Circles, Stellar Development and Frictionless Banking Services, and CELO, providing access to distant markets, provide people in areas that do not have local banks with these valuable banking services. This quick last summary covers how dApps deliver smart contracts and how the blockchain serves as an inexpensive and very secure ledger for transactions. Decentralized applications, dApps, run smart contracts. Smart contracts are agreements between two or more people, are software, they're written as code, they are recorded and stored on the blockchain, and they execute themselves. They're smart contracts, automatic, so transactions cost fractions of a penny. The blockchain ledger has great value because all dApp transactions are recorded and stored on it. It is much more secure than a traditional bank's ledger because it does not reside on a single server, which is vulnerable to hacking. It is decentralized, but even more than being decentralized, it is distributed, residing transparently with personal IDs encrypted on hundreds or thousands of computers around the world called nodes, all of which safeguard the ledger's immutability. And through these dApps, operated and stored on the blockchain, poor people in developing countries can set up trusted lending circles, secure very low interest loans, and conduct low friction business transactions, 
and have access to new international markets, all which can help them flourish. Okay, with all those things in mind, let's move on to a brief bit of new material which gives the video its name, Decentralization, the Internet of Things, and Human Flourishing. In the video Decentralization in the Power Grid, we touched on some of the many smart devices that are available today for our homes. These can be conveniently controlled through a network known as the Internet of Things, with our phone or even a voice command. Cool stuff. Through the use of this Internet of Things, dApps, smart contracts, and blockchain's distributed ledger, poor people could reap greater financial returns from their limited assets and resources. I want to illustrate some possibilities with a seemingly unrelated scenario, but it will make sense shortly. Suppose I want to construct a gazebo in my backyard, and I need to anchor it to a concrete patio so it doesn't blow away in a storm. In order to attach the gazebo with bolts, I need a hammer drill. But I don't own a hammer drill. Buying a hammer drill for just this job seems, seems a bit expensive because I don't have occasion to use one very frequently. If only there were a DAP that could find me someone nearby who already owns a hammer drill, like Joe here, who would be happy to rent it to me for a short period of time. Sure, I could rent the tool from the local rental outfit, but they, understandably, need to charge enough to cover their overhead for their brick and mortar service center. Joe, on the other hand, is happy to put his asset, the hammer drill, to work for him and make him just a few bucks because it's only sitting on the shelf in his garage today anyway. I get a great deal, my gazebo gets attached, Joe gets a few bucks in his pocket for a few short minutes when I pick up and drop off his tool. Win-win. But what does this story have to do with the developing world and human flourishing? Well, through dApps, smart contracts, and the distributed ledger on the blockchain, people in developing countries can safely and accurately and efficiently exchange goods and services using any small assets they own, putting them to work just as Joe did with his hammer drill. In blockchain revolution, we are told that this can unleash the economic potential at the bottom of the pyramid. We're talking billions of new customers, entrepreneurs, and owners of assets on the ground, ready to be deployed. Remember, blockchain transactions can be tiny, fractions of pennies, and cost very little to complete. Anyone with the smallest of assets, say a talent for embroidery or weaving, as we had discussed previously, spare water pails, a chicken that lays eggs, a mobile phone that records data, audio, and images, could all exchange value. If we do this right, Blockchain technology could unleash the biggest untapped pool of human capital in history, bringing billions of engaged, prospering entrepreneurs into the global economy. In the video, Decentralization, the Blockchain and Human Flourishing, I started with a quote from Max Borders in his book, The Social Singularity. What we're really interested in here is flourishing, or more specifically, how people can organize themselves to improve their well-being. The extent to which we can organize ourselves to be happier, healthier people is the extent to which we can organize ourselves to create more peace and prosperity. In summary, I would like to finish up with one more quote from Max. Communities of tomorrow will form entire systems of mutual aid through digital compacts, having nothing to do with borders or accidents of birth. Hopefully you feel you learned something good to know. If you did, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching. More educational content can be found on the Good to Know website, domain goodtoknow.site.